Hey everybody, it's Lynn from Alaska. I got a special treat for you, especially for all of you who are Deadliest Catch fans. Uh, this morning, Dan wanted to to drive to Wasilla to get something put on his truck that we've been waiting forever for, and we needed it to go to Fairbanks because uh, it protects your truck in case you hit a moose, which the moose are very prevalent right now. So anyway, long story short, uh, FYI for all you filmmakers, make sure you bring your camera wherever you go because every single time I do, I run into a filmmaking project that is just amazing and I'm like, gosh, I'm so glad I brought my camera. So today was like that too. We we're, you know, I didn't want to go because sitting and waiting at a car place is like going to the dentist, you know, or sitting waiting at the doctor's office. I just hate it. But there's a there was a rare treat waiting for us at a place called Custom Truck in Wasilla where Dan takes his truck to get extra things put on it and the guy that owns it his name is John and you just don't wait in John's waiting room you are engaged in conversation that is interesting and lively and full of stories and Alaskans love to tell stories I mean, I know a lot of people like to, but it just seems like everywhere I go, Alaskans just love to tell stories. And when I initially put, took out my camera, he started talking about crab fishing, because I guess he used to be a crab fisherman. And when he started talking about that, boy, I reached in my pocket and my camera came out, and he just ran off, ran in the back. I said, and I finally talked him into talking in front of the camera. He said he was a little bit nervous, but it seems like once you get them started they they just can't stop so and, and I, that's why I like having a small handy cam camera or, or something you can hold in your hand because it doesn't seem as intimidating to them hope you enjoyed this movie and uh, in John's story uh, greetings from Alaska Tell me the story of the crab fishing. So there we were. <laughs> and uh, uh, Dennis Black was the captain, and uh, I was on deck, and uh, Dougie, and uh, Johnny Simeonov. So there we were. <laughs> I knew you were kidding. And we'd been uh, running from the ice. The ice was coming down. We were uh, probably north of St. Paul Island somewhere. and. Uh, Ice was coming down and we were um, trying to get our pots out of the way because the ice flow will take the pots and um, bury them for one thing or drag them for miles and miles and you'll lose your gear. And we, uh, he decided to put on a few more pots, something like 40 more pots against our wishes because we were so iced up. Uh, but he was nice and warm, he was in the wheelhouse so we thought he was out of touch with reality. <laughs> And it just happened to be that uh, we made a run south to drop the gear off. Uh, the boat was heavy with ice. Uh, what we didn't know was that uh, the boat was also, uh, the deck was flooded with water, but we couldn't see it because all the pots were uh, on the base deck, on the, on the, right on the bottom there. <clears throat> but we had these hatch covers, they were perforated metal, and all the water would rush up through them, and it would, it would spread out the crab inside the tanks, and that's why we had those special uh, hatch covers on. 
What we didn't know is that the scuppers were frozen and all that water was staying on deck. So when we uh, got to the spot where we were going to try to dump off some pots, and I'll be right back at the station identification. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> uh, that we were going to start dumping gear, we were, uh, we'd pull a pot, we call it a spot check. We'd pull a pot to uh, see if any crab was in it. And if there was crab in it, we'd check a few pots, and then we would dump the load of gear and be on our way to get the next load. And it just happened that uh, he took a uh, turn toward the port, and the boat started to very slowly um, list to the port side, and it wasn't coming back. Normally a boat will just have a, a roll to it, and the roll stopped, and we listed to the side, and all that water rushed up against the uh, port wall there. And Dennis, to his credit, uh, even though he was a little bit out of touch with reality that day, <laughs> didn't panic. He, uh, he, he told Dougie to swing the crane uh, to the starboard side. The crane was on the port side, and it was a 12-foot uh, crane pedestal. So uh, the problem with the um, with the problem uh, with the ice at the time, the ice would cover the crane pedestal up on top, and you couldn't get the thing to break loose. It would take sometimes minutes to work it back and forth to make to to break that uh, turret loose. But it broke loose right away on that particular day. I think the Lord was in our favor that day. And he swung the uh, crane over to the starboard side, and he started extending the crane. And that brought the boat slowly over to the starboard side. Then it listed to the starboard side, and we just kept swinging that crane until, uh, until it stopped. And we were sitting uh, uh, you know, uh, flat again. And uh, in, the, in the process, we were um, you know, sh shutting the hatch doors to the forepeak because the water was coming in. And, uh, it was a terrifying moment. Uh, I was praying to Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't ready to meet him. <laughs> and I think Simi peed in his pants. <laughs> and, uh, but everybody was shaken. And there were three boys in the, in the rack uh, that uh, were oblivious to what was even going on. Uh, they probably rolled around in their dreams a little bit uh, that day. But uh, the whole thing may have lasted a minute. Uh, I don't recall. But... Uh, had a lasting impression, and after that, everybody got up, and we spent hours beating ice and getting the deck cleared. And uh, and uh, when I got back in the galley, Dennis asked me if I was going to quit, and I said I quit years ago. I just haven't gotten off yet. <laughs> so it, it's to Dennis's uh, credit; he didn't panic. If he'd have panicked, uh, yeah. What What's the worst that could have happened? You think? Just uh, rolled over. Completely, huh? Rolled I mean, over, yeah. did, were you guys wearing the suits? No, nobody wears suits on deck. It's can't work in a suit, so really, yeah, it would have been over. Yeah. yeah As to Dennis, Dennis's credit, if he'd have panicked, it'd have been over. Wow. And, so and to the Lord, you know, he was uh, he 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 had some other things for us to do. <laughs> it wasn't your time. That's it. So if the ice hadn't broken on the crane to let it loose, then it would have just gone over, huh? Either that or it laid there for a while. I don't know. The, it wasn't coming back up. It wow. was laying there. That's scary. It was. Time stopped for a moment. <laughs> Thanks, John. You're welcome. This is what Dan and I went to get today. If you drive in Alaska, it's a really good idea. They call these brush guards everywhere else, but in Alaska they call them moose guards because if you hit a moose, your truck's probably totaled. But this will give you a little bit better chance of not having as much damage and the place that we went today that I filmed the, the crab fisherman uh, the guy who was a crab fisherman John uh, he puts these on at custom truck in Wasilla so uh, if you're planning on uh, moving up here or driving a lot in Alaska these are a really good idea to have one